Wake up. It's the Sleep Unplugged podcast, episode 55. Are you sleepy or are you fatigued? I'm so tired. Welcome, everyone, to the podcast. My name is Dr. Chris Winner. I'm a neurologist and sleep specialist, and most importantly, your host for today's podcast. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Glad you're with us. If you are a veteran of Sleep Unplugged, welcome back. This is a big topic that we are talking about today. It's a topic I speak to my patients about frequently, and I'm really excited to dive into it with you. So before we begin to contact the show, you can find me on my social media handles. That includes Twitter and Instagram. It's Dr. Chris Winner. If you have a comment or a correction, you can send it that way through a direct message. I'm now on threads, whatever, whatever that is. You can be the very first to DM me, DM me a message about the show on threads if you like. We have a YouTube Sleep Unplugged page where we post the videos of all of our episodes. You can certainly contact me through that portal as well, too. I have two books, The Sleep, but Solu the Sleep Solution, Why Your Sleep is Broken and How to Fix It, as well as The Rested Child, Why Your Tired, Wired, or Irritable Child May Have a Sleep Disorder and How to Help. I write about sleepiness and fatigue in both because the topic is just that important. We usually start the show off with a comment, correction, some communication from one of our listeners. And today we are talking with B. B wrote me and said, hi, Chris, I came across your podcast in a de desperate search for help. I was diagnosed with mild sleep apnea with an AHI of 11. And if you're a listener of the show and you listen to our sleep apnea podcast, you know that means she's having 11 breathing problems per hour in October of last year. Since then, I've had two other sleep studies, both with an AHI of 11, seen multiple sleep specialists and ENT, and used a CPAP since December, all to no avail. I am still hopelessly exhausted, and CPAP has made me feel just as bad, if not worse, just like you described in episode five. And what she's referring to is episode five, we did an episode called Death by CPAP. It was related to people who were diagnosed, just like B, with mild sleep apnea and were frustrated with the treatment outcomes. So basically, she sees an ENT. He says, stop doing this. You have zero obstruction in the back of your airway. She's done blood tests. Um, and basically, her doctor also left her, her primary care doctor left the practice unexpectedly. So now she's just trying to figure out her overwhelming exhaustion on her own for the last few months. Ready to stop the CPAP altogether. She's ordered my book and just feels hopeless. Uh, thanks for reaching out. Well, thank you for reaching out, B. And here's the deal. This is what this podcast is about. B basically went to her doctor feeling absolutely exhausted. To his credit or her credit or their credit, the doctor paid attention ordered a sleep study, and it came back with mild apnea. She treated her mild apnea, but it didn't make a difference in terms of the exhaustion. So that's really the foundation of what we're talking about today on the podcast. Are you sleepy or are you fatigued? Because what it's looking like here is that the problem of mild sleep apnea was not really the cause of what sent B to her primary care doctor in the first place. And we're going to dive more into that as well, too. Uh, before I get going, I'm going to mention three other people who communicated with me via the show. These communications were all about the Spotify playlist. So when the show turned one, and it's one year anniversary, all the music that we talked about on the show, I compiled to a Spotify playlist. And so I've gotten several comments about that. Steve wrote, for your last episode about the five senses, you should have gone with Senses Working Overtime by XTC. I agree, and it crossed my mind. I just am a bigger fan of Tommy than than, than XTC in that song, although uh, Oranges and Lemons is one of my favorite albums. Love that song. Uh, Merely a Man is, is, comes to mind off that album. It's fantastic. Um, Kate wrote, um, I'm obsessed with Do What You Do. 
Uh, I'd never heard that song before. Thanks for pointing it out to me. Yeah, it's a great song. And um, no one else can do what you do, Kate. So appreciate you uh, communicating with the song. And we had a similar sentiment from Alexis, who said, I can't stop listening to Virginia Plain. That is a fantastic song. If you're not familiar with Roxy Music's catalog, that that's a that's a doozy. So, well, thank you guys. I'm glad people are interested in the podcast and certainly glad people are interested in the podcast Spotify playlist. We will continue to add to that music. In fact, today we add I'm So Tired by the Beatles. This is the first time we've mentioned, I think, the Beatles on the show. This was from their 1968 uh, album, The Beatles, which is most people refer to as the White Album. It was their, only, it was their ninth album. It's the only time they ever did a double album in their career. They really wanted the white of the album, the plainness, to be in contrast with their eighth album, which was Sgt. Pepper. So White Album is really where the Beatles, I think, start to kind of show the early signs of falling apart. No wives, no girlfriends were allowed at, uh, in the recording, which we actually have, a, interestingly, have a similar policy here at Sleep Unplugged. No wives or girlfriends in the studio while I record. I'm kidding. I have no idea what that means. Um, so this song, I'm So Tired, came about when the Beatles were in India uh, on their famous and well-documented transcendental meditation retreat with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the... Um, the guy who invented transcendental meditation. And so while they were there, John Lennon was really missing Yoko and struggling with significant insomnia. So he wrote this song. It's actually credited Lennon McCartney, but John Lennon wrote it. And this is an interesting song because at the end of it, Paul is making some sort of, I'm sorry, John is making comments like, how about another one? And people thought if you played it backwards, you could hear Paul is the dead man, miss him, miss him, which I did when I was a kid. I actually got a cassette and recorded that song and then unwound the cassette and rolled it into the cassette case backwards so I could listen to all the backwards lyrics um, off of, of that song anyway. And it kind of did sound like that, by the way. <laughs> so um, fantastic song, sort of a, a, a fantastic bookend to the song I'm Only Sleeping on the album Revolver a couple years earlier, which also was credited to Lennon and McCartney, but John Lennon wrote that um, as well. And it's just, I'm Only Sleeping is the biggest, best testament to bed rotting that's ever been recorded and speaking of bed rotting i want to give a shout out to diane macedo at the sleep fix method she is the abc news live anchor and i was on her show last week talking about bed rotting so we will put i'm only sleeping on the spotify sleep unplug podcast volume two in your honor diane and of course i'm so tired we'll go on there as well too so let's get into the show this sh i've wanted to do this episode for a while I always listen, one of my favorite podcasts is The Daily. I usually listen to it every day when I run. It's a 20 to 30 minute episode, so it's always perfect. One episode that I listened to recently was actually kind of an advertisement, sort of trying to get you hooked on another New York Times podcast called The Retrievals about a controversy of it, that happened at Yale University to a lot of women who were getting eggs retrieved for fertility purposes and somebody in the clinic was actually stealing the fentanyl that was supposed to be used to ease the pain of these women and they were stealing it and replacing it with normal saline so as you can imagine you've got 26 eggs to retrieve you're literally feeling every retrieval in the most horrifying and graphic ways and I don't want to get too into it um, because it's a little bit outside the realm of what we're talking about here. But as I was listening to that podcast, one of the themes of it is how we don't really pay great attention to the complaints of women when it comes to pain. That woman after woman after woman was basically saying, I can't bear this. Please give me more pain medicine. And they were like, look, we've given you all the fentanyl we can give you. Like the, you've reached your limit. And women are like, I don't think that I can do this. And, and, and not only are they in just tortuous pain, 
but the system kind of makes them feel like, well, this is your fault. This is your weakness. This is your hysterical nature. In fact, hysteria is brought up there. I mean, you're in you're in the region of the the uterus, which was thought to be loose or disconnected in women who were hysterical and was roaming around their body. And as I was listening to this podcast, I was thinking, I think we do the same thing to individuals who complain of fatigue. And, and probably more so women than men that we dismiss, that we define poorly, that we often make it feel like it's the patient's fault. And I think just in general, there's not a lot of enthusiasm for, for dealing with it. So we see a lot of individuals who are struggling with both sleepiness and fatigue. And I define those as being two separate entities. In fact, there was some really interesting research about that. There was a, there was a study in 2006 in Sleep Medicine Review called Distinguishing Sleepiness and Fatigue, Focus on Definition and Measurement. And I'll, I'm going to read a little bit about, um, this was a Shapiro study. Um, and in it, it says, despite their different implications in terms of diagnosis and treatment, these two terms are often used interchangeably or merged under the more general lay term tired. Sleepiness is multidimensional and has many causes, multi-determined, and distinguished from fatigue by presumed impairment of the normal arousal mechanism. So let's stop there. And think about a couple things there. Number one, we're bringing in the word tired. So one of the reasons I chose the John Lennon song, I'm so tired, is I think a lot of the problem we have in dealing with things like sleepiness and fatigue stems from the word tired. And tired is a very common word that an individual might use when they go to their primary care doctor. What brings you here? I don't know. You know, over the last two months, I had a little illness, and ever since then, Doc, I've just been so tired. I don't know why. You know, or one of the more common phrases that I hear is, "Chris, I am just tired of being tired." When we think about B and the the problems and the tribulations she's been through. B, my guess, went to her primary care doctor at some point and said, I'm really tired. And that's what led to the sleep study. So the other thing that we that's mentioned here in this article is that sleepiness in some way is related to an impairment of the normal arousal mechanism. So what they're saying is right now, you are listening to this podcast and you're on the edge of your seat, admit it. I am sitting here delivering the podcast and enjoying every minute of it. We are both highly aroused uh, in the most technical term of the definition, meaning that we're vigilant. We are awake. We are conscious and experiencing life. If you listen to our last episode, we are taking in sensory input, processing it, and using it to communicate with one another even though the communication is to some degree one-sided at this point. But if you want to contact the show, Dr. Chris Winter, uh, we certainly appreciate any communications. So what they're saying is that mechanism is impaired. Our arousal mechanism is impaired when we are sleepy. So now we're kind of stuporous. We're watching the show. You know, you're sitting there watching your episode of Outlander. And you realize, oh my gosh, I think I just fell asleep. Like I missed, I don't know who this character is right now. You know, let's rewind this and 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 because I, I've been asleep for a little bit. So your arousal was impaired. You fell asleep. They go on in this article to define fatigue. And I would say really quickly, they make a mention sleepiness is multidimensional and has many causes. I always think of sleep as being a bit more simple than that, meaning that it has two causes. You're not getting enough sleep, so you, know, you fall asleep because of it, or there's something wrong with your sleep. Now, I think what the author would say is, well, yeah, Chris, when you say there's something wrong with your sleep, that's a lot of different things. That's sleep apnea. That's narcolepsy. That is a brain or a brainstem injury. So 
what they're saying, I think is true, but being a simple man, I like to keep things sort of inadequate sleep, meaning low quantity sleep or, you know, poor quality sleep are the two ways I think about sleepiness. But they go on to say fatigue is an equally complex phenomenon. I would vote it's more complex, but that's okay. Uh, that's a that's splitting hairs. It's nature captured by a number of conceptual conceptualizations and definitions. Measures of fatigue have remained subjective with a gold standard for its measurement remaining elusive. And I think that's a huge problem. How do we measure fatigue? What is fatigue? If it's not impairment of the normal arousal mechanism, what is it? You know, I think of fatigue as being body energy. You're going to get up and, you know, my, I've got a, two sons who are really into fitness and, and one's at the Naval Academy and one's out guiding people on the trail right now. And, and he just sent me some pictures of this amazing, the young one who's guiding right now sent me some amazing pictures of this unbelievable overlook i think they're near the new river valley gorge in, in west virginia right now doing some uh, whitewater rafting and he's like up there doing push-ups with all of his campers that are with him and, and whatnot so they're they're really into to fitness so you go out and you hike a big section of a trail and then you do a big whitewater rafting expedition down the the golly river and then you're doing push-ups back at camp and at the end of the day, somebody asks, hey, how are you feeling? You might say, I'm pretty tired. Tired can mean sleepy. We could be talking about that for sure. But you also might be referring to tired as, hey, my body energy is low. In other words, hey, you want to go hike some more of the trail real quick before dinner? You might say, I I'm a little too tired to do that. I don't have the body energy to do that. So when I think of fatigue, I'm looking into the cell. I'm looking into the mitochondria. I'm looking into energy stores and ATP and nutritional information, and uh, uh, nutritional reserves and all those things that allow us to fuel our body through the day. You're going to do three sets of 10 on the bench press and you get to, you know, you know, rep number seven and you're, and you know, I forget it. And the spotter has to take the weight from you. You couldn't lift the weight. Why? Because you were too sleepy? No, you were fatigued. Your pectoralis muscles and triceps that didn't have enough energy to get that weight up for the seventh rep. So you just quit. You gave out. You didn't have what it took to make that action happen. That's what I think about as being fatigued. And, and thinking about my sons and thinking about college students, there was a 2022 study in the in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. It was called Sleepy, Tired, Drowsy, and Fatigue Have Different Meanings for University Students. This is a really interesting study. So basically saying, forget the experts. Let's go talk to some college students and ask them, when you hear these words, do you differentiate them? And if you do, how? And it was really interesting. They said fatigue is commonly associated with pathological experiences, often linked with things like chronic illness and other expressions of a psychological distress, which we haven't really talked about. You know, if you're dealing with depression, dealing with anxiety, they're saying that fatigue often goes along with that. In fact, we kind of look at that sometimes as almost a diagnostic criteria. I personally don't think sleepiness goes along with depression, but a certain degree of malaise, fatigue, you spend a lot of time in bed, we're back to bed rotting again. I'm really worried about my daughter. She's just always in bed. She's always tired. She's really down. What do I do? You know, that kind of goes along with it. And again, because we don't separate out sleepiness and fatigue, a lot of people with pathological sleepiness Going back to the early episode we did, why no one cares your child is sleepy, that pathological sleepiness often gets misdirected down the psychological pathway. Well, your child's depressed. That's why they're always sleeping. That's different from always being fatigued. In comparison, I'm going back to the study now, in comparison, sleepy as a reversible state may be linked to imminent reduction of sleepiness and restoration of alertness followed by a period of sleep, such as a brief nap or a nocturnal sleep period. So 
it was interesting. They saw fatigue as being something more related to a chronic health disease, a psychological state. They saw sleepiness as being related to your alertness, which going back to our previous study is once again, another way of talking about or relating to a arousal mechanism and sleep either your nocturnal sleep period or a nap. Interestingly, when they looked at the word tired, it seemed to be intermediate to fatigue and sleepy and a more generic term used when an individual is either too tired to be more discriminating or is experiencing both sleepiness and fatigue. So once again, the word tired to me is an umbrella. Do I see tired being used for people who are sleepy? Absolutely, all the time. Sweetheart, I'm too tired to finish watching this movie. Let's stop it. Let's go to bed. You're falling asleep too, and we'll finish it tomorrow. I am too tired to finish to, to finish running this race. I'm going to stop at the next water station, drink some water, rest, you know, adjust my socks, put a Band-Aid on a blister that's developing, and then... I'm going to try to get my energy back, drink some Gatorade, eat a banana, and continue running this race because right now I might be too tired to finish it. We're, you're not too sleepy to finish it. You're not saying I'm running down the road with my eyes closing. You're too tired. So again, I think these things are really important distinctions to make because patients all over the world, including B, are going to their doctor and describing something to them that they need help for. And as I mentioned in my first book, The Sleep Solution, of the top seven complaints that patients have for doctors, primary care doctors, one of them is, I have trouble staying awake. I'm excessively sleepy. Another is, I am tired, I'm too tired, I'm pathologically tired. So this is not an insignificant number of patients who are going to their doctor to say this. This is big time. Let me tell you something. Since COVID, it's it's exploded. People everywhere are going to their doctors and saying things like, I am tired. Please help me. Just like B. And choosing our words and the definitions behind them are extremely important. And I also think it's extremely important for us as clinicians to make sure we're getting the right complaint from our patient. That's my responsibility. When a patient comes in and says, Chris, I'm so tired, I've got to differentiate that and use the tools in my toolbox to do that well. And so now we get to distinguishing between sleepiness and fatigue. And there was a paper on that. Uh, uh, back in 2003 by um, uh, Dr. Pigeon and uh, Michael Satia Sat um, was on that uh, paper as well, too. Um, it was called Distinguishing Between Excessive Deep Sleepiness Fatigue Towards Improved Detection and Treatment. And basically what they said is a high percentage of the general population is coming to us with complaints of excessive daytime sleepiness and fatigue. In fact, when I was at Aspen Ideas Festival, sort of one of the themes of the lecture I gave, and, and certainly one of the themes I gave of my, my big idea, um, which you can see videos of that on my Instagram, was essentially in, the, in our current media landscape, we pay so much attention to people who quote unquote can't sleep. That is everything the medications, the Lindsey Vaughn commercials, the tips and tricks, it's all about that. The people who are excessively sleepy, A, get ignored, B, are basically revered. Oh my gosh, I wish I could sleep as well as you can because you're such a, you fall asleep so fast. And we are not recognizing these people the way we should. They're not, they're not being pulled out and diagnosed the way they should. And one of the things that they cite is saying the general medical literature does not normally distinguish between excessive daytime sleepiness and fatigue. And let me tell you something. I research every one of the podcasts that I do to the best of my ability. Do I make mistakes? I'm sure I'm making them all over the place. And like I said, contact the show if you hear one. 
it was really difficult to find good information because like any literature search we do, we use keywords. I cannot tell you how many times I keyword searched fatigue in some other concept, found the article, read the abstract, and was immediately like, oh, the authors are clearly describing excessive sleepiness as fatigue. They're using it interchangeably. Uh, you know, how do we address surgeons on night shift works? How do we address their fatigue? Do they have real fatigue exhaustion? Sure they do. Standing up and operating and running back and forth from the uh, you know, OR on the seventh floor to the ER on the ground floor. Yeah, I'm sure they are fatigued. But clearly when you're reading the abstract in the article, they're talking about excessive sleepiness. Can we mitigate fatigue with napping, uh, different call schedules, et cetera? And again, we've got to be very clear when we're talking about sleepiness and when we're talking about fatigue. Um, so they said basically fatigue was in particular difficult to manage because it's difficult to properly identify. So excessive daytime sleepiness and fatigue are operationalized in ways that contribute to blurring rather than to distinguishing between the two. And existing measures of both EDS and fatigue may also contribute to their misidentification. So what are those measures? Well, one of them that we've talked about on the show is the Epworth sleepiness scale. And we tend to, as sleep doctors, consider that to be the gold standard for determining excessive sleepiness. So presumably, maybe B walked into the office of her doctor, and maybe that doctor or the sleep doctor that she saw eventually before she got her sleep study administered the Epworth. I hope they did. I think every primary care dog, if I could lecture, I have a dream that the American Academy of every primary care doctor, you know, the American Academy of every primary care doctor in the world invites me to give a lecture to their group for their big CME conference. So I'm not talking to sleep doctors, I'm talking to primary care doctors. And I've talked to school nurses, I've done lectures for pediatricians, I mean, I've done this kind of thing before, but I wanna to talk to all of them. I want a massive stadium full of primary care doctors. I think, and they said, Chris, you can talk about whatever you want. This would probably probably be what I would talk about. Every one of you should be using the Epworth sleepiness scale for people who come in and complain of being tired. The Epworth sleepiness scale, as you know, it's eight items. I'm going to read the item out to you. You're going to tell me how likely it is for you to fall asleep. No chance you'd fall asleep. Slight chance, 50-50, definite. No chance is a zero. Slight chance is a one. 50-50 is two. Definite is three. You're... Lying down to rest in the afternoon when circumstances allow you to. How likely would it be for you to fall asleep? High chance, you do it all the time, or never, or maybe with slight chance every now and then. Talking to someone, reading a book, magazine, or newspaper, watching a television show, sitting quietly in a public place like a waiting room, a college lecture, a meeting, a church service, sitting quietly after a big lunch, passenger in a car for one hour without a break, driver of a car parked at a stoplight or stuck in traffic. There's also an Epworth sleepiness scale chads for younger people who you know, are in school and not driving. And so you tally up that score. B scored a 17. I'm making this up. B scored a one. Primary care doctors, listen up. You've got a powerful piece of information in your hand right now. A 17. Wow. That person is falling asleep, their arousal mechanism is impaired significantly in all kinds of situations. They are highly driven to sleep. I would call the person who scored a 17 excessively sleepy. You scored a one. You know, you're not falling asleep anywhere. In fact, sometimes it's hard for you to fall asleep when you go to bed at night. That person who's devastatingly Tired, and I'm making my quotation fingers, is probably more fatigued than they are sleepy. Now, can you be both? Sure. The person who scores a 17, they're excessively sleepy. They may also be fatigued as well, too. So we have to kind of keep these things in mind. For fatigue, we don't have great assessments. And that was sort of mentioned in that first research paper that we talked about. We talk about the fatigue severity scale, it's similar to the Epworth, although instead of being zero, one, two, three, slight, uh, sorry, no chance, slight chance, 50, 50, definite, it's more strongly disagree is a one, 
two, three, four is neutral, five, six, seven is strongly agree. There are nine items. My motivation is lower when I'm fatigued. Exercise brings on my fatigue. I am easily fatigued. Fatigue interferes with my physical functioning. Fatigue causes frequent problems for me. My fatigue prevents sustained physical functioning. Fatigue interferes with carrying out certain duties and responsibilities. Fatigue is among my three most disabling symptoms. And finally, fatigue interferes with my work, family, and social life. That was that assessment goes back to 89. I think it was Krupp that 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 did it. Um and just reading it, it's helpful. It should be used, but you it does leave something to be desired for sure. So one of the problems we have with assessing fatigue is we don't have great assessments for fatigue. And a lot of sleep doctors would say, you know, the Epworth isn't so hot either. And there's a, I think there's a whole committee that's looking at trying to figure out a better way to develop an assessment for excessive sleepiness. So Again, more studies. This was a, another study that came out. It was a Belgian study from 2010 that said clinical complaints of daytime sleepiness and fatigue, how to distinguish and treat them, especially when they become excessive or chronic. And they say in this paper, the lack of distinction in the clinical use of these terms like fatigue and sleepiness is an important issue. So I, I think that even though we don't have great tools for it, we can conceptually understand what we're talking about here so that when we go to our primary care doctor or we go to the sleep medicine specialist, we're armed with the right terminology and concepts about these things so we get pointed down the right direction, which really brings us back to B. If B were in my clinic, I think we might be having a conversation of, hey, Good job trying the CPAP 17 times. Good job, you know, going through all these sleep studies. You're done with sleep studies. Now, I've told patients this before. You are, I don't care where you go in this life. You are not allowed to have another sleep study unless you call me first. Even if I'm not your, you move off to Sarasota, Florida or the big island in Hawaii. You're, you're hanging out there. And some doctor says, I think we need to do another sleep study on you. Man, you've already had seven. Like, we're not doing eight. We're back to death by CPAP, death by sleep studies again. So it's really important to have these types of things because now we face that uncomfortable position of, hey, B, I think your sleep is pretty good. Yeah, you got some mild sleep apnea. You can We can deal with that in a different way later. But it is not touching your crippling fatigue. So I'm going to declare your sleep is great or at least good enough not to be the cause of your fatigue. And so now we are, where are we at now? We're at the situation of, okay, well, Chris, if it's not my sleep apnea, what is it? Like, wh what are we dealing with here? And that does become a problem in terms of we're now back to square one. We're now back to basically saying, hey, look, I, I don't have the answer for your sleep, but at least I'm going to send you in the right direction in terms of trying to find help. And, and that often indicates we need to send you to somebody who really not only specializes in fatigue, enjoys it, sort of runs towards that problem instead of a lot of individuals who really run away from that problem. They, they don't want to address fatigue. They've checked your thyroid. They've checked your B12 and basically said, look, nothing's here. I don't know why you're fatigued. Go see Chris. Go have a sleep study. Maybe that's what happened to Brie. Again, I'm making all this up. So now we need to get you to somebody who's going to assess your fatigue. I'm not a fatigue expert. I'm a sleep expert. And somebody said, well, what, what else could be going on? Somebody's already checked my B12. They checked my thyroid. Let me tell you something. There's hundreds of causes of fatigue. I give you Here we go. I'm going to give you one for every letter of the alphabet. A for anemia, B for B12 deficiency, C for cancer uh, or congestive heart failure or COVID, 
D for depression or diabetes, E for electrolyte disorder, F for fibromyalgia, G for grief, H for hormone deficiency, I for iron deficiency, J for Gilbert syndrome, K for kidney disease, L for Lyme disease, M for mononucleosis, M for multiple sclerosis, N for nephrotic syndrome, O for organophosphate poisoning, P for POTS disease or pregnancy, Q for Q fever, R for rheumatoid arthritis, S for scurvy, or scarlet fever or strep throat, T for thyroid disorder, U for uremia, V for varicella, which is a fancy word for chicken pox, W for whooping cough, X for xanthine oxidase deficiency, or Y for your syniosis, and Z for Zika virus. And that's just getting started. There's plenty of extra ones for lots of those letters. My point is this, when your doctor has done a, a fatigue workup and it consisted of checking your B12, and a thyroid panel, maybe for a guy, it was T for testosterone. Great, I'm so happy those things came back normal. We can check off S for sleep because now we know that sleep or sleep apnea is not your problem. There's lots and lots and lots of things left on that list to figure out. Tick-borne illnesses, good one for T. I mean, it just goes on and on. So I have patients all the time who come back and say, oh, they've already worked me up for fatigue. No, they have not. They've started, maybe, but they have just scratched the surface. So bottom line with this, if you are talking to a clinician who is not paying attention to your pain, like in the podcast I was listening to, or they are not paying attention to your fatigue, let's find another specialist who will. And if you are somebody who's had sleep evaluations done and they're recommending you have more sleep evaluations done, for mild disorders, trivial disorders, disorders you've already treated, it might be time to step outside of the sleep box and move towards a specialist who's going to look beyond mild sleep apnea for the cause of your fatigue. This is probably one of the most common questions I get. There are specialists out there who specialize in the treatment of fatigue. Find that clinician, get feeling better. I hope this podcast gives you the language you need to figure that out. And I'll end the podcast with one final piece of research I came across. This was from the British Journal of Health and Psychology, how sleep is related to fatigue. So they gathered data from about 278 adults. And I'm going to read the results real quick because it's really, really telling. Fatigue was significantly predicted by depression scores, somatization levels, and subjective sleep quality, how you felt about the sleep, not what the sleep study shows. And we've talked about the way you think you're sleeping and the way you actually sleep can be two incredibly different things. It was not affected by quantitative sleep characteristics such as sleep latency, nocturnal awakenings, and early morning arousals. In other words, what was actually going on with your sleep didn't really relate to fatigue. Depression levels were also positively and significantly related to all aspects of fatigue, except for physical fatigue, like lifting that weight on the bench press we were talking about. Fatigue that responds to sleep and rest, which I would say in that study was probably sleepiness. Physical fatigue was correlated with somatization, but not depression. So this is a study, this was from 2003, where they're actually trying to figure out what things put us more risk for fatigue? And how does that differ from sleep and maybe our own objective sleep? So if you're out there struggling with fatigue, struggling with sleepiness, I hope this podcast is arming you with really specific language that you can take to your provider to use to get the help you need. Contact the show. Let us know what you think about about it. Uh, you can rate, review, please subscribe to the podcast. You can even subscribe to the Spotify playlist if you want to. Again, DR Chris Winter is uh, Twitter, Instagram, and now Threads. Check out the YouTube channel. And until next week, I hope you sleep well. <laughs>